Hello everyone. Welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to discuss how to validate the JSON object using the JSON schema. First, let us understand that what is a JSON schema. JSON schema is the blueprint of the JSON object. It represents the structure of the JSON object. It also describes the required properties and their data type for a JSON object. JSON schema is commonly used in contract testing as well as it is also used to represent the request body and response body of an API in the Swagger documentation. So in this video, I'm going to discuss during the testing how you can validate a JSON object that will be used for the request body or for the response body using the schema. So first, let me give you an example of the JSON schema. So this is how the JSON schema looks like. It describes the structure of the JSON object. It also has the information about the properties that are required in the JSON object and their data types. To validate the JSON object using the JSON schema, I'm going to use a package and the package is coming from the Newtonsoft framework. So let me install that package in our project. So I'm going to install this package in our project and this package provides certain APIs using which you can validate the JSON object with the JSON schema. So after the installation of package is done, just rebuild your project. And this is to make sure that we are not getting any compilation error. So build is successful. Inside this project, I'm going to create a directory called schema validation. Inside this directory, I'm going to create another directory called schema. So this is the JSON object, which I'm going to use in our code for performing the validation. So first I'm going to generate the schema for this JSON object. To generate the schema for this JSON object, I'm going to use the online website. So this is the JSON schema for our object. Let me copy this JSON schema and store it in a file in our project. After this, inside this same directory, I'm going to create a test class and let me call it as validate schema. I'm going to make this class public as well as I'm going to use the attribute called test class. Inside this class, I'm going to create the instance of the random class and that instance will be used for generating the random value for one of the property, which is of integer type in the JSON object. After this, I'm going to add a method inside this class and with that method, I'm going to use test method attribute. So this is our JSON object, which I'm going to validate against this schema. Let me create a variable for storing the randomly generated ID. So following are the steps that I'm going to use for performing the validation of the JSON object against the JSON schema. Step one, parse the given JSON schema. Step two, parse the given JSON object. Step three, call the isValid method for validation of the JSON object against the JSON schema. To parse the given JSON schema, first we need to read the JSON schema from this text file. To read the data from the text file, I'm going to use the file class. Inside this class, there is an API called 
read all text. So first I'm going to change the properties of this file so that whenever I'm building this project, this file will get copied inside the configuration directory, whether it's a debug configuration or the release configuration. So just do a right click on the file and select properties and then select the option that is copy to output directory and change it to copy always. With this, whenever I build my project, this file will get copied inside the configuration directory. So let me show you that. So schema validation schema and this is the text file which contain the schema. So let me copy its location. And I will pass this reference location as a parameter to this API. Then I'm going to store all the content in a string variable. Then I'm going to pass this schema. For parsing the schema, I'm going to use the class that is coming from the package that we just installed in our project. And the class is JSchema. Inside this class, there is a static method called pass. And I'm going to use this method for parsing the given JSON schema. After that, I'm going to parse the given JSON object. And for that, I'm going to use a class called JToken. Inside this class also, there is a static method called parse. And I'm going to use this method for parsing the given JSON object. On this object, I'm going to call the extension method that is isValid. And this API is going to perform the validation of the JSON object in accordance with the JSON schema. The return type of this API is boolean. That means if the given JSON object is in accordance with the given JSON schema, this API is going to return us true. Otherwise, it is going to return us false. And then I'm going to print the variable at the console. Let me put a debug point at line number 49 and run this script in a debug mode. So as you can see here, the value of the variable is true. That means our JSON object is in accordance with the given JSON schema. Now let me use another JSON object. In this JSON object, one of the property that is this property is missing. And then I'm going to pass the JSON object as a parameter to the parse method. And again, run this script in a debug mode. So as you can see here, now the value of that variable is false. So in this case, we are able to validate the JSON object, but we are not able to identify that if the validation fails, what is the cause of that failure? 
So for that, I'm going to use another version of is valid method. In this version, it automatically returns a list of validation error object, which contains the information about why the validation failed. And inside the validation error class, there is a property message and using this property, we can find the reason why there is a validation failure. So for that, I'm going to use the for each loop because this is a list. And let me go ahead and run this script. So the execution is done. Let me open the logs. And this is the information that we are getting after using the message property. And as you can see here, we can easily identify that why the validation failed because this property was missing from the JSON object. So in this manner, you can perform the validation of the JSON object. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching.